Coming up on this episode of Swing Nation, we've got a recap of birthday celebrations for Chaz. We've got Frim Fram celebrates 11 sweaty years, and Bobby White has some advice for swing band leaders. Swing Nation episode 7 starts now. Get that job, close the door, get the carpet off the floor, Swing Nation. People grooving together. All around the planet, gates are in the groove. Don't have to understand it, you just have to move. Truck on down, pimp your stroll, put some jelly on that road. Swing Nation, people grooving together. Hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, you guys, this is going to be one of those shows. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back to Swing Nation. Yeah. Uh, this is Letta. Sorry, um, Zucker Punch. Whatever. Yeah. You. Wow. Whoa. You went old school. You went Letta Mercurial. Yeah. That's this me. is Slick Rick. And this is um, <laughs> this is Spuds McKenzie. Oh, wow. I'm going old school also. That's All the way back to the potato famine. Yeah. All the way what? back to before Yehudi. Yeah. Spuds McKenzie is the actual my actual nickname, but it's just Spuds. Oh, really? Now. Yeah. Oh. It's Mr. McKenzie to some of you. That should be the question. Who's old enough to remember that? Ms. Jackson, if you're nasty. Yes. <laughs> so, welcome to episode number seven. Um, we had a ridiculous episode number six. So, we're, uh, I think, it's kind of, I was like feeling was a little awesome. pressured at trying to come up with something as good as that, but every show is its own little gem, I think. And fortunately for us, we had a birthday. And thankfully, someone was born, and there were many celebrations for him that we can... Someone was born many years ago. Yes. Still celebrating him now. Yep. And there's a something going on upstairs. Whoever would that be, Rick? That would be Mr. Chaz Young. Yay! The Happy birthday! Son and best friend of Frankie Manning. Yeah. So, yeah. And uh, we'll get to that in a minute. We've got, so yeah, we've got some recaps from that uh, celebration that just finished on both coasts. And uh, we also have another little party that we did in New York for um, Frim Fram uh, for their anniversary. And uh, some advice from Bobby White. We haven't talked about Bobby in a while. So no. Yeah, because it's been like a whole two episodes. At least. <laughs> I mean, we Ridiculous. But well, we probably talked about uh, one of those two in D.C. Uh, every show. Either Jerry or Bobby. True story. And then we have a very interesting video from Canada. Uh, I don't even know. I, I don't. I, I might be the only one in the team who's seen it. Yeah, yeah I think you are. It's well, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm I've seen it. so many versions. Not that one. I've seen so many versions that I'm. I'm just gonna ride it out. Okay. Yes, I think it's best to this. experience it that way. Um, uh, we should thank our host, uh, Cafe yeah. Sophie, and we have oh. some lovely. Beverages again provided from them. I had a lovely beverage, but it was lovely, and I drank it. Yeah, which one? Which one did you have? Uh, I had the white peony. White peony. Uh, Spuds has the <laughs> dragon, and I have the monkey. <laughs> <laughs> and he's. I'm driving Jim crazy right now. On the air. <laughs> that was really classy, dude. It's the time. And of the season so. for tea drinking. <laughs> We're playing with the lights here, too, so don't send an email about the lights. We know. What's your name? Who's your daddy? Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's stopping you. So uh, what have you been up to, Rick? How's it going? Uh, I've been great. I, uh, we had a little uh, harangue party at Epic Swing, so we uh, kind of brought back some memories from the, the three or four times that I've been in harangue. What does that mean? You had a harangue party. The, yeah. Uh, what, so, what so Katrine was in town to teach with Frankie uh, with Chaz, and uh, she, we so we decided. I guess they decided to, to in honor of her being here as one of the founders of harangue to have a harangue themed dance. So there was cabaret. And there was uh, there were no mosquitoes. Who but was there? No a one lot got of sick. Biking around, and hooking up. <laughs> yeah, exi- oh. there was a tra- there was a special trailer you could go to with your special friend. Yeah. <laughs> so was that there two years ago? Because I never saw it. What the what? The special trailer. Oh, there was the love box. The love box. But that was 
a few years ago. And they only did that one year, and now the love box is, was the green room that all the they just use it as a green room for the musicians before they get on stage. Okay. Uh, they ma- they had the um, the limo. I think the like the love limo this year. <laughs> Yeah, that's what? even worse. All right, it well, was like a limo that you could rent. So they didn't have that, but they did have uh, uh, a theme, a theme party, a, cabra- a uh, costume party. It was adventure themed, sort of Indiana Jones themed. And there was actually like a prize hidden that you had to put together a map to figure out where it was. They had, uh, they started playing blues year music later. So there was this sort of slow drag part of Rang. Gotcha. There wasn't, there wasn't a meeting. Yeah. It's kind of hard to. No meeting? Up. No meeting. Oh, that's about I right. guess Nathan was sort of like Leonard, <laughs> but I don't know. That that, that would, would have been really hard. I think to do. it's really hard to have a substitute for Leonard. Yeah, yeah. It's oh. Just like and it's hard to recreate harangue for since ninety percent of the people there didn't know. And never been to <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, that so that was fun. Um, how have you been? What have you been up to? Uh, coding something fierce. What? Yeah. We finally we started our final projects for the program in, in where I'm learning to code and learning Python. And um, what did you do? What's your last? What was your last assignment? Well, mm, my last assignment was building this um, robot movie rating <laughs> app. <laughs> movie rating? Yeah. So like you have a lot of ratings from IMDb, and there are averages and um, basically predicting what you would like would think of a movie based on other movies that you've reviewed and what other reviewers who are similar to you have reviewed the movie at. So I've seen The Lion King and you haven't, but we have similar tastes, so you, yeah. you'll probably have a similar rating to mine for The Lion King if you want to see it. Get this woman on the Yehudi dev team immediately. Yeah, seriously. So, so now we're doing awesome. final projects, but I swear to God my final project is like ten times harder than everyone else's, or maybe it's just harder because I'm the one doing it, but I'm recreating Swipe. So if you have, like, an Android phone, you can just go, like, wiggle, 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 and it, it can interpret what word you meant instead of having it going S-E-A-T-T-L-E for Seattle. You just go, and it knows what you mean. You have to make that sound. That sounds hard. It that is hard, really hard, as a matter of fact. So that's pretty much all I've been doing. But it's fun. Yeah. And I already have, like, three ideas for the next projects I want to do. It reminds me of this this, this website that um, one of my coworkers created called Good Beer and Bad Movie. And you can go to it. You can go to it. Goodbeerbadmovie dot com, and it pairs up a beer with a really shitty movie using Netflix API, <laughs> and then that's what you're stuck with. And you can actually hit hit refresh all the time. It gives you. You can say, "I want a lambic," or "I want a you know a whatever kind of beer." Trappist. Right. You check on which beer you want, and then it picks a movie based on that beer. That's funny. <laughs> a bad movie. A bad movie based on that beer. Yeah. You know, Carl and I kind of had something like that this weekend where we drank my favorite wine, which is Moscato d'Asti, and watched the second, third, and fourth Twilight movies. Oh, God. Oh. They're was, awful. Oh. They're so bad. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> but it was like, I didn't, I didn't want to watch something, like, good. <laughs> Right. There's just these times when you're in the mood for a really crummy movie, and not three crummy. Yeah, but movies. you could pick Buckaroo Banzai. But you I've seen Buckaroo pick... Banzai. I have not seen the Twilight movies. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. And Buckaroo Banzai is not a bad movie. I it's know. Everyone movie. says Buckaroo Banzai is not a bad movie. It's a good bad. It's a bad. It's a bad movie. It's, it's, a, a it's an awesome, movie. terrible movie. The thing is, my respect for you goes down when I hear you watch Twilight, and up when I hear you watch Buckaroo Banzai. <laughs> <laughs> That was just the greatest moment there. But, I mean, everyone's seen, like, what is that movie? Like, The Abyss or whatever that one that, like, goes... The Abyss. That's a good movie. Uh, that's a good... Uh. There's one, one of them that, like, <laughs> goes into the depths of the ocean that, like, super duper sucks. And mm. everyone has to watch these, like, awful movies it's okay, at some point in their the lives. Abyss. I really can't fight for it that bad, but yeah. it's okay. It was on my type list your, of, like, Type your favorite movies. terrible movie in the chat, people's... <laughs> and the thing about no. the Twilight movies is, like... They're sixteen-year-old crack, and you know they're like <laughs> <laughs> they're addictive, <laughs> and it's hilarious because they're so bad, and you're sitting th- sitting there going, "Oh my god, the acting is awful," but yet you still put in the next one. Sixteen-year-old crack. That's, also, like forty-five-year-old crack. 
Because in the theater, I've What would you it. rather have, people? A 16-year-old crack or a 45-year-old crack? <laughs> Let's keep going. <laughs> wow. mm-hmm. And on that note... <laughs> That's some good tea. <laughs> <laughs> so... How have you been, Spuds? In, in related news... <laughs> uh, fine. I haven't done much, have I? We were in that Jack and Jill competition. Oh, you, yeah, were, at we the, were. you, were, you were invited. <laughs> yes. In the... Inv- <laughs> <laughs> There's a Jack and Jill going on upstairs right now. <laughs> and the Invitational Jack and Jill. We were invitationally invi- invited. Invitation, yes. Not even just like normal invited. We were invitationally invited. Right, right. Well, basically. That's how vi- talented we are. That's how awesome. That's how awesome sauce we are. Now, there's there's this venue out here, Wednesday Night Hop. And they have really, mm-hmm. it's in um, Mountain View. Mm-hmm. So it's in it's in Google City. Um, it's like right next to Google. Yeah. And, Although um, everything in Mountain View is like right yeah, next to Google. Well, they basically, yeah, they basically bought Mountain View. They're like, we're going to buy you, and then here's free Wi-Fi, so shut up. Yay. Um, but it was fun, and Wednesday Night Hop is awesome. So if you're ever in the, in the Bay Area and you happen to be on Ma- in Mountain View on a Wednesday night, go to Wednesday Night Hop. But they had this fun little um, invitational Jack and Jill. I'm doing air and quotes. So they had this invitational Jack and Jill, or really it was just Audrey asked the people who are like teachers in the local area – who she thought would probably be free on a Wednesday night, <laughs> to come down and um, give the people at Wednesday Night Hop an idea of what a Jack and Jill looks like. I um, was already there because I was teaching. so. But she wanted to give them a model so that when they do their Jack and Jills for the next few weeks, they, you know, they've like seen one, they see how it works. Oh. So we were you know, supposed to be good role models. So they had, this was like new for them. Yeah, for a lot of them. Okay. Uh, it's still going on. So if you are in, down in the Mountain View area in the next few weeks on a Wednesday night, um, I think this week is prelims. W- 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 is it really? Um, I think so. I don't know. I don't know. Um, check wake out me the up website for, the for Wednesday Night Hop. Meetings. Yeah. I don't want to see a video of the Invitational. <laughs> it was fun. I came in second. Yay! But you'd gone home and didn't even get to stick around because and Because I have three year old. What was the prize? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if glory. there was one. I know there was one for first place, but glory, <laughs> glory. endless glory and endless gloating. Glory. Oh. So was so uh, in in related news to Manu kicking ass and taking names. There is a similar bloke who kicks ass and takes names Look. and recently had a birthday. How's that for a segue? Perfectly <laughs> done. <laughs> yes. So as we were leading in, Chaz Young uh, has been celebrating. 80 years uh, of youth and dancing uh, with uh, coast-to-coast celebrations, uh, as as is only fitting, both New York and San Francisco. Mm -hmm. New York just happened to, you know, have this little weather event, and then they decided to still continue to celebrate jazz anyway, which I thought was really great. And uh, we have a little clip of the New York Swing Dance Society celebration, and um, maybe we can pull up uh, Norma and Chaz doing a little thing together. Oh, wow. Oh, my. <laughs> That's Chaz's go-to move right there. <laughs> yes, go Norma. I gotta, you know, I gotta give it up. These cats are doing this so long. own person, but I so see his father on YouTube. But I guess he and Norma have been performing together much longer, right? Because they had a whole show together. Yeah, they, 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 is there any, is she going to say something? Yeah, I think that's, that's it. I think that's all we need to see. All right. They, um, yeah, they've been together for quite a while, Chaz. So Chaz had a, we had a little thing at 920 special, um, where I interviewed Chaz and, um, um, what are you looking for? No, I'll pull Frankie's picture back. Thank you. It's a little wide shot. There we go. Um, yeah, I interviewed Chaz, and it was it was it was so it was so weird because number one, like you just said, um, I don't know if it's because we don't see Frankie that much anymore, like in person or whatever, 
or it's just flat out Chaz is so like his dad it's silly and you don't see it maybe if they're two if the two of them are together mm. but you do see it when he's not with his dad and man everything Chaz did just gave me goosebumps because I'm like mm. that's that's Frankie right there you know mm. um so that was awesome. Yeah, that, uh, he, he talked a little bit about him working with Norma and um, um, just the tours all over the world and, uh, you know, his tap dancing and his swing dancing and stuff like that. Um, He's one cool cat. Yeah, Chaz is really, really awesome. And um, I think I'm glad that he's, well, he was he's, he and his dad were doing it forever, teaching and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So... Um, you know, I'm just glad we still have, like, the Frankie Manning legacy of Chaz with us. And he's so into it. He's, yeah. like, he's beaming. He's he just, mm, there's no phoning in it with Chaz, you know? That's awesome. Oh, nice. Hey, uh, some, some, someone said, I'm sorry, but someone was like, hey, Manu, congr- uh, I see you're, you're, you're interviewing Chaz like you did his dad. And it's weird because I didn't see it like that at all. Mm-hmm. But I guess you could see it like that. I didn't see it like that. I was just like, no, nah, I'm, well, I'm interviewing Chaz. Right. His jazz is awesome. <laughs> yeah. So, that's all. And, yeah, you can't really phone it in when you're dancing with 80 follows. Yeah. Right. I can't. Twice. Who does that? Twice. Who does that? Dances with 80 <laughs> follows. It's ridiculous. Yeah. So, we've got a couple of clips of both the New York version and the San Francisco version. Uh, since we're in New York, let's um, see at least just like the ending of uh, the 80th follow or thereabouts. Let's see the San Francisco version. Wait, let me see if I have the San Francisco version. Oh. <laughs> Is that the San Francisco? Sure, sure. Let me add the San Francisco version. Where was the San Francisco version, actually? 920 Special? 920? At you know, that, uh, that, that place? Hmm. Is that it? So we had, yeah, so we had a, a celebration of the 920 Special. We also had... Uh-huh. Some awesome performances by some uh, the eight misbehaving group, which our own Jim Thorpe was one of the performers. That was that was, was cool. that your first yeah. performance? No, I performed a few times. He's an old hand. No, but with the eight misbehaving, that was a full yeah, time. Debuted you Thursday. debuted that piece yeah, for. We debuted our troupe on Thursday. So no pressure. They debuted their troupe for chess. At, with yeah. like hundreds of people watching, with Chaz yeah. sitting there in the front row, yeah. staring at them. Chaz on a chair in the middle, <laughs> up front, in his bright yellow suit and yellow top. Yeah. Like man, yeah. I got the footage up now. Oh, cool. Okay, so yeah, there's, there's, nice there's Tracy. Oh, Tracy, nice. Get down. Shit. <laughs> Is that it? <laughs> like, let's do this 100. Re- he's ready for another dozen more. <laughs> That's all you got? <laughs> <laughs> Man, I hope I'm half so awesome, man, maybe. Is that it? Yeah, yeah there we go. That's it. 
<laughs> well, happy birthday, uh, Chaz. I almost said Frankie. I know. Oh. It's hard. I know. It's <laughs> good to see him, you know? Hmm. <sighs> yeah, we were so lucky that he decided to come to San Francisco to celebrate with us for well, his I actual mean, birthday. Can you blame him? <laughs> <laughs> All right, fine. Please. I was trying to have like a San Francisco positive moment there. He had a good time. He had a good time. He, I think so. I talked to him. Yeah, he was, he was, yeah. Awesome. Cool, y'all. Well, so New York kept it together <laughs> long enough to have that for... Uh, Jazz's birthday, but um, oh, did you want to go to the sure. anniversary or the? Yeah, let's go to let's, let's mention it. You 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 take it away. Yes, so we have this little dance on Thursday nights at um, in New York called the Frim Fram Jam, and it has been going on uh, wow eleven years. So it really had, does get that's it. In there. It feels like it's been going on longer. They according Just 11? To, according to our website, it's the eleventh anniversary of Frim Fram. So it does yeah. I don't know. I, that's I'm not upset. <laughs> don't get me wrong. Yeah. Anyway, the, 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 the great part was not just also it was not just the fact that we were celebrating our anniversary, but it was right after Hurricane Sandy. So we decided instead of doing our usual kind of uh, kind of fundraiser for our, our own website, we would donate, give all the proceeds to different causes um, related to hurricane uh, the hurricane recovery, and we actually raised a nice little chunk of change, uh, about a thousand bucks. And we gave uh, uh, everything from like super industrial fans to h- help in the recovery efforts to Coney Island, USA. Um, uh, toothpaste batteries. Toothpaste. Oh my gosh! What's a toothpaste battery? <laughs> you know, it's for your toothpaste, so it's like extra <laughs> potent. Are we? Do they? Do, do, do those get washed out with the sandy? All toothpaste batteries? Are, oh, I'll shut up. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, anyway. We gave to the Humane Society for food and shelter for animals displaced by Sandy. Um, I like that one. Uh, to the New York Food Truck Association, which I guess was donating hot meals for people. So it was nice that we had got to people got to celebrate both Yehudi and Frim Fram and give a little bit back to the community. So Yeah, that's really awesome. Yeah. I love when people do things like that. Like for their birthday, they like make the world a better place for others. I think yeah. that's awesome. Mm-hmm. And that, a lot of that him. was the work of Heather, Lily Blue, and yes. supported by Swifty Ryan Swift. So great job, guys. I wish I'd been there. There were contests, too, yeah? Oh, yeah. There was a dance contest. Uh, and the, the winners were, let's see, first place, <laughs> Megan Taylor Morrison and Rafal Pastelny. Sorry. Uh, second place was Akemi Kinokawa and oh, Chad Mills. Akemi! Okay. And third place, Elaine Silver. And Adam Lee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Michael Winslow. Or Marsha Winslow. Or whatever. Oh, yeah. We, sh- we should also mention that uh, Chaz Young's birthday at 920 Special, all the proceeds that night went oh. to the Frankie Manning Foundation. Oh, yeah. All proceeds that what night. What an excellent point you made. At yeah, 920 that- Special at Chaz's birthday, yeah. in case you didn't already hear Jim. Um, hey, yes. Yes. Frankie Manning Foundation. Uh, check it out. Frankie Manning Foundation. Foundation. Dot org. Dot org. I think so. That thing. That thing. <laughs> that, that site. <laughs> well, cool. <sighs> so now for something completely different. Really? We're going to talk about what? Yo Gabba Gabba? You and Yo Gabba Gabba. Jeez Louise. You'd think you'd have a toddler around or something. Um, <laughs> well, in other news... Um, <laughs> Bobby White, once again, is timely and hits things out of the park with his latest post. Um, a quick note on training bands to play for dancers. Interesting. Yeah, if you haven't read it, you should check it out. Uh, he's got some good things to say. Um, I th- think that this is the initial groundwork behind probably a longer thing that he wants to do. Um, interviewing a bunch of dancers and band leaders or musicians in general to find out what everyone's looking for um, in music for um, dance events. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is a great groundwork, I think. He has some like really good key points to start out with, like keep your song short because no one wants to be on the dance floor for like seven minutes at like 250 beats per minute and dying. Like, I'd rather have two songs at that tempo, or I'd, ha- I'd rather have two songs during that same time 
um, and you know gets to dance with two different people, for example. Yeah, I like uh, point number three about um, having a flow of tempos that there should be that tempos should vary, but they should flow into each other without too much of a big jump. And I think that's one thing that a lot of bands normally do with their gigs. They'll do like a blazing fat, uh, fast, like hot jazz song, and then they'll go into a blues song right after that. Yeah, you know, that's the, the biggest drag ever, because I'm sweaty. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, hey, you want to rub all up <laughs> on this now? Huh? Yeah, you know you do. You should do that into the camera, because it's way creepier that way. <laughs> Getting the focus hey, on that. you want to oh. rub up all See what I mean? Now? You see what I mean? This wow. is very disturbing. I see what Jesse's saying about wanting this as an audio podcast only. <laughs> oh. So, so yeah, if you're if you're a band and you're thinking about uh, putting together your set, that if there's a kind of a progression from slower to faster, as opposed to super super slow and then super super fast and then super super slow, that's uh, it's you know that's what dancers that's what makes it easier on the dancers. Yeah, I think points four and five are really good. To, I mean, obviously, all the points are really good. I'll I'll be really quick about this, but. Um, that the rhythm session section has to be really solid because oh, yeah. when you're playing for dancers, yeah. if that's your weak point, then yeah, no things are go. just going to really yeah. not go terribly well. But um, I thought his point five that soloists, if they can improvise in a relatively predictable <coughs> way, then that's really great because, um, I mean, those of us who have been dancing to this music for years and years, you know, we have, or just listening to it for a really long time, we have some sense of the flow of a solo and, and how a song generally goes, but there are definitely times when a soloist has completely just, like, surprised me in a way where I'm like, I can't really dance with the music if it's entirely something that I've, like, never really heard before. Yeah. I mean, there's only so many chord progressions but if you go into some, like, strange tangent, then, I mean, I can enjoy it as a listener, but I can't really come with you on it. Um, so if you're relatively predictable, have some, like, recurring themes, yeah. then that's great. And I really do love when I get to dance with a band and feel like I am participating in something that they're yeah. giving me rather than just, you know, walking on it. Walking on it. <laughs> yeah. Using it as a backdrop or something. Yeah. So these, these, as he says, these are kind of like the starting point of uh, conversation, and you can already see in the 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 comments that there's all these great comments from other musicians and dancers and organizers. Mm -hmm. I love the scene. This one post from Rusty saying mm -hmm. the the message she gives to all the bands that come to come to her venue, and uh, it's very similar things about tempos and pacing and song length. But uh, I think the, to the degree that you can kind of we can get the word out to bands that may want to be booked more often by swing because we actually just got an outreach we got, just got someone reached out to us another local band was like hey we never get booked for uh, Lindy events how do we get booked and I, it's like well I don't I don't I don't I'm not the guy who books things but you know something like this I think would be helpful to read as a band leader so you know the kind of things the dancers are concerned about that influence whether or not they're gonna you know, keep booking you for your venue or bring you out to their their um, their camp or something. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, one of my favorite exchanges in the comments for this post is between Glenn Kreitzer and Mike Gamble. Oh, boy. <laughs> no, it's great. Talking about, like, um, the difference between making great music for dancing Lindy Hop and making music, great music, for modern Lindy Hop dance scene. Hmm. Um, and just thinking about the transitions that we've gone through in terms of what we want to listen to has changed dramatically mm -hmm. over the past, like, decade or so. True. Um, and we've sort of been... Uh, Mike Gamble puts it really well. He says that um, the age of novelty danceable subgenres and side genres is done and that we're arriving at a historically-minded consensus. Um, and so, you know, the time when um, Elvis was considered danceable, you know, or when people yeah. did, like, the Shim Sham to Janet Jackson. Like, those times are over, and we're, we're kind of, like, coming to terms with the fact that um, this particular kind of music, for right now anyway, um, is what 
makes a lot of sense with the music that we really super duper feel. Maybe that'll change. I hope it doesn't. I really. We did a shim sham to Janet Jackson in Connecticut. We did. Wait, (laughs) what are you saying? Which song? If one were to do, not that I would do this, but what song would you do? Um, This song right here. (laughs) (laughs) You can shim sham to this song. Oh my god, no, no. You remember that one? Yeah, and there's also um, Plenty. Why did they play that song? Oh god, yes. Why why of all all songs one could play did they play that song? Then she gets plenty more. Uh, I like that song. I like that song too, but we don't dance to that anymore. No. Oh god, I I need to totally play that. No, you really don't. I think we're really okay. Oh, all right. I, um, I double dog dare you to play it next time. No, uh, I, 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 I un, I un double dog <laughs> dare you. Totally. I rescind the double dog dare from over here. <laughs> what do you say, uh, viewing audience? Should Spuds play plenty, plenty in his next set? That's Eric Badu and Guru, right? Guru, yeah. Yeah. I'm Rest not contributing to this. Um, I think this uh, conversation or this yes. uh, topic that <laughs> <laughs> I got a yes. <laughs> I think this topic that um, Bobby brings up on, by the way, did we mention that it's on his blog, Swung Over? Yeah, we showed it. Okay. Um, I think it's particularly timely now that Electro Swing seems to be mm. making its presence known in the world. And mm-hmm. I, <clears throat> I'm not really enthusiastic about dancing to it. <clears throat> I'm not terribly enthusiastic. So we were talking about this last night because um, sometimes Nicole and I hang out. We never hang out with Rick. Um, well, he's in <gasps> Oakland. Oakland. What? No, we were talking about this, and it's and, and I. Uh, there's a lot of electro swing featured on Jesse's show. Not to go yeah. on a tangent, um, and I enjoy it. I just kind of don't want to dance to it. I think that's my yeah. I'm with you on that. Yeah, there's lots don't. of music that I love to listen to that I don't want to do the Lindy Hop to. Like right. I, I want to dance to pretty much everything, but I don't necessarily want to do the Lindy Hop. Yeah, but are there any scenes where people are playing electro swing at their Lindy Hop dance? I don't think I've ever. Well, people been are doing anywhere. performances to it, and that's kind of the gateway, you know. Like you make it I okay guess. for other people to play it at their dance events. I, I would, I would be interested to know if there's been a, anyone who was at a dance and like just as part of the mix, someone threw in Caravan Palace. Or, people are impressionable. Yeah, especially oh, people yeah. who are like. Um, maybe not in like the biggest scenes in the country. I feel yeah. like it's easy for them to look at the videos of performances that are at you know ILHC or Camp Hollywood and say, oh, this is the thing that people are doing. And then you know mm-hmm. the chase is then all over the place. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or you know people start doing things to yeah. electro swing. Is that how West Coast Swing started? Or that's how that's how West Coast Swing sort wow. of transitioned so, toward hate, more modern not, music? I don't know. I mean, was like was it like a novelty thing when then suddenly like people were like oh I guess we are going to dance to Christina Aguilera for now. It could be. I don't think we no, want to get know. into it. I don't it think here. we're going to open that kettle up. We I'm should like, have. I'm not judging. No, I know. And should I, get Rob Royston on. If we got to have Robert Royston on the show. Yeah. Remember we had him on the show a yeah, long yeah, time yeah. ago. Amazing. We should table this and see if we can get Robert Royston on the show because not only he is amazing, is he amazing? People look up Robert Royston if you don't know who he is. And his lovely wife, Nicola. Um, and do the pointy thing. And do the pointy thing. Like this. <laughs> do the Isaac the bartender thing. Um, <laughs> anyway. Okay. That's a really good question, though. Is, did the music dictate yeah, yeah. where the dance goes? Usually it does, right? But, but, we'll, but we'll I'm wondering if it was like that. Like someone just like, decided, like, I'm going to do a performance to a I think I know who it was. pop song. And then people <laughs> are like, know that's, what the that's, name is. that's how you win competitions. And therefore, that We became- just posted about that recently on the West Coast side. Was it Lindo? Oh, Possibly. Could have been. Someone recently did a blog post about how um, West about West Coast Swing's relationship with the music and mm-hmm. how they're dancing and the music interact. Yeah. And how um, newer people people who are newer to the dance don't really have the the swing component so much. Right. Because exactly. The, I mean, the music. It might have been it. Festa. Because yeah, Festa's yeah, Festa. really, yeah, Festa. yeah, John Festa is like Festa. a champion of justice for swing. As is <laughs> Sylvia Sykes. As is Mario Robau. All these old school Westies. How the hell did we get here? And the conversation. <laughs> well, we're talking about music and the kind of things oh, that okay. we want to dance to. Okay. Yeah. Right. So thank you, Bobby, for allowing us yeah. to completely go off topic. Yeah. But oh, Lindy Shopper says that, uh, or Woodley says that, at the Piedmont Swing Dance Society, someone was playing some sort of 
uh, electro swing and that people did actually dance. See, I am vindicated. So. People are impressionable. <laughs> I'm telling you. So. Yes. <laughs> I'm looking for copyright veil <laughs> violations all over this podcast. You do not but want this, this the shit right to here. ever go on YouTube. Baby face and Desiree. Yes. Oh gosh. All right, that's enough. Okay. Th- that is that was the gateway song that mm-hmm. I first did like my almost pseudo wannabe Westie to. <laughs> out of yeah, I remember hearing that out of swing in New Hampshire at late night. Um, but I'm willing to bet if if you can get, I got to get my hands on this video. I got to call Carol. Fraser. Fraser. I was about to say Callahan. Holy oh. crap. I got to get in touch with Carol Fraser, my old partner. She has a... Whoa, lights on, please. She has a... <laughs> she has a copy of um, the... Suddenly got very nice. It got me. very dark. <laughs> yes, it got hey, very dark. Let's take it down now. Yeah. Well, he started playing Babyface and Desiree. <laughs> 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 what did you think was going to happen? I, uh, um... The U.S. Open put together a tape of... Thanks, Jim. U.S. Open from... Are we still on the air? Okay, good. Of the U.S. Open. <laughs> <laughs> that was a funny moment. Um, like 15 years of U.S. Open or whatever. Uh-huh. And if you watch the competitions, as they go, they go from pretty much Hollywood-style Lindy Hop performances... Really? Slowly into slower wow. and slower and slower and slower. And the couple I remember seeing that had like the biggest gap between what had come before it and what they were doing was Robert and, and Deborah, Robert uh, Cordova and Deborah Seke. Mm. They did something that was completely different, that was slow and sexy, and it was awesome, but it seemed like everyone went, oh, we need to go there now. Mm. So, I don't know. It's just a side note. Uh, I got a side note that I want to get that video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we got to show some stuff from it, and uh, that should be fun. So, uh, speaking of songs that will make sure that this show never plays on YouTube, uh, can we go to this uh, Montreal Montreal? Lindy Hop uh, promo? Yeah, that one. Which uh, two of us have not seen yet. We'll just let's just just, just roll it and see what happens. All right, let's do it. I promise we're not Rick rolling you. (laughs) (laughs) I'll switch. Open Gangnam Style. Uh, which one's Alan? <laughs> the Asian one. But that's awesome. It's, yeah. They're not doing this, the um, Gangnam Style dance. There, there we go. That was like. Shag. What is that? Yeah. 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 Now they're doing not the Macarena. <laughs> Alright, can we... Okay, yeah, uh, alright, it's... Oh, wait, 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 there was a... Yeah, I, I know, I'm still done with it. <laughs> <laughs> you don't understand, like, I'd never heard this song, and maybe it came out fairly recently, I'd never heard it before or doing my program, but all of a sudden, it was effing everywhere. Yes. I've heard it, like, a dozen times. And now, my dad emailed me the other day. Oh, no, Harold. Hey, Harold. They're doing a performance. To Who's that song. Your dad is doing a performance that's like, oh. Is it a. His teacher's Eric Novoa. Is it West. It's a Where's West Coast it? Swing yeah. I, performance to Gangnam Style. Eric the Spotlight Novoa. I love Eric. I love Eric too. I love but Eric. So the someone, songs that he. So the previous performance that they did was Call Me Maybe. 
<laughs> so my dad knows all the words to call me maybe, <laughs> and he's like memorized the Korean Gundam stuff. Oh my god. Okay, so people are like, what, what was the point of that? So according to the show, according to the video notes, this was to promote two swing dance events happening on Halloween weekend in Montreal. And so dancers got together to dance to an extremely authentic jazz music from the early 2010s. Right. Um, it's the Cat's Corner 14th anniversary, um, Lindy and Blues Exchange, and the Montreal Swing Riot. So, uh, yeah, it was a promotional for that. Right. I well, guess. I mean, I've seen the, um, I think it's the MIT version, which is hilarious also. Is it is it? it it's not nerdy? swing related at all. It's totally nerdy. It's MIT. Uh, do robots perform it or something? Or <laughs> No. I don't think they are robots. Okay. I could be wrong. There's a lot of things going on. It's funny, though. Yeah. Even if you didn't go to MIT. I did not go to MIT. Just saying. <laughs> and on that <laughs> note... <laughs> <laughs> well, you should have gone to MIT. That's all we're saying. No. Skid more in the house. Oh, oh yeah. sorry. Hey, is it time for a giveaway yet? Yeah, we can give some oh, stuff away. Right. So, oh wait, I have two possible questions here. Two possible. Two possible. What are questions. your top possible questions? Um, How many videos? So do you, have you can left, see by them the in the. Yeah, I wanted to mention. I wanted to mention, but go ahead, do your question. We'll we'll tell. Well, them. we have which one should I do? Well, didn't th- did we already do the first one? Did we already do the first one? I oh, think okay, so. we okay, we did the second one. Okay, so this is to the first person who can chime in with the right answer. Who in the has chat not already won a video of our of our uh, hundreds hundreds of 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 viewers right now. So are you ready? Leave it for someone who hasn't already won. You can't... uh, can't, Mercy, you can't win another DVD. Um, What is the original name of the Texas Tommy? Ooh. Uh, And Jim can't win either. Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah, Jim, if I can't win, you can't win either. Don't type it in if you can't win and you know the answer. And Brooks Spuma gets it. Really? Yes, the Apache. Oh, yeah. Oh, how could I forget well that? Well done. How could you forget that? I yeah. Works promo. It. Go ahead and email spuds at com. Right? Yes. Works was here like a week or two ago, and oh, was I completely failed to see him. The oh. handshake? Is that it was the last time. name, or that's just, I know it's called the Apache, but isn't the original I think it's like name a, that's handshake like, behind the back? No. Handshake that's behind what, the back? What kind of name is that? That's what Chaz said on, on Thursday. He might have been wrong, but, you know. I, I think both of those would have been acceptable, but Brooks Bruma came in with uh, the first answer. Anyway, Marissa can't get win anyway, so Brooks Bruma, you win. Email spuds at yehudi.com for your fabulous prize we have for one of the two DVDs so we, we have got left. two DVDs left. T- tell me there's we a follow and a leader one. Uh, well, no, most we of have... them are lead and follow. There's only one that's particularly lead and one's particularly follow. Oh, we have... There we go. <laughs> we have Basics, which nobody wanted. But the Basics what? DVD is awesome. It's Basics. That's hilarious because I've taken like a Basics Frack class yeah. from with uh, Kevin and Joe and it like blew my mind. This was like a year and a half ago. So yeah. it's not like it was back in 2005 no. when I was learning. It's, it's super awesome. I've watched it. Basics, F. Yeah, and Partner Charleston. Oh, I want no that. No one took part in the trust. Well, you what? can't have it. So if I can't two, have so the like Joe solo dancing one, then you can't have partner Charleston. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. It's only fair. Well, I hope someone in in San Francisco wins it, so then I can borrow it from them. Or you know, Kevin and Joe live here. Yeah, you they can do. buy it from them. <laughs> yeah. Or you I could spend it. money yeah. and give it to my friends. They're exactly. coming home tomorrow. Oh Ooh. yeah, they been away. Yes, yeah. they've been in, at Lindy Shock and then in Israel. Oh. Yeah. Like you do. Israel. As one does. Um, is so it Israel yeah. or is it to be real? What? <laughs> to be real. <laughs> it's got to be Maybe real. Maybe that'll be our closing song. No, because we already have enough violations on YouTube anyway. <laughs> <laughs> YouTube will be coming after us. I think we need to cheer up Spuds with the swing. What do you think? Uh, sure. I think hmm. he's can getting we, a little. Can we? Can we uh, a little sad pull face, this up, homie. We can. I don't know if I want to. Okay, let's let's pull <laughs> up something here. I don't know if you have a here. choice. I don't have a choice. Unless you want to talk to the nice people. This for is the next uh, Brett and Courtney <laughs> doing a thing. Brett and Courtney doing a thing.
feel like this is one of the first ones I've seen where the guy is really into it and the girl is just yeah. kind of sort of there. I was just there with you, dude. Where he's like, come on! And she's like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah, she's obviously got training. But she's, and the fact that she's so flat. She's not feeling it. In terms of like her performance. He is clearly like so talked her into this. Pointed toes! <laughs> <laughs> He definitely wanted to do this and she went along. <laughs> yeah, I am. Uh, <laughs> I, I okay. Mean, are we okay? Although I do like the skirt. I oh. find them entertaining. I don't know what, maybe I'm, a good, maybe I'm in a good mood. I mean, for bad dancing, mm -hmm. It's not the worst thing ever. No. No. It is the swing, so it definitely is the swing, but... Whoa, that was... <laughs> whoa. <laughs> What's good is that if the audio's a little bit not synced, it really doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> it's just... They're just doing whatever they're gonna do. Oh. Oh, okay. He lost her for a minute, you notice that? <laughs> He's like, where? Bro! I think oh. that was the best thing that I've seen in this <laughs> video, <laughs> where he was just, like, shaking it out. You go, <laughs> you go. Well, we're still watching. <laughs> oh, 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 whoa. I all of a sudden like her a lot. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right, do we need a bell? Take you anywhere. Do we need an inappropriate bell? <laughs> we may need a cowbell for you. Ah, oh, yeah. That's uh, what I'm talking about. I mean, that was that was bad, but uh, in the realm of badness, there was... We've seen yeah. a lot worse. Uh, it was cool. So I think I get more upset when... Th so there's this wing, and we know kind of know what to expect from this wing. Mm -hmm. I get more upset when, the, when it's the swing, when people are trying to sell themselves as professionals, mm -hmm. and when their quality movement is also bad. In this one, they weren't... Or I don't know what they're really about, but the, uh, you know, it didn't look like they were trying to say like, "Hey, come learn the swing from us." And you know, their quality movement was infinitely better than it could have been. So I'm not, you know, too terribly upset. Yeah, I, 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 f I feel that too. I feel like they're not trying, yeah, to sell us anything. They're just like, "Hey, we're we're doing this performance." Yes, I normally do ballet, but here yeah. you go. <laughs> here's my here's my character piece. <laughs> exactly. Um, there's a, there's a, did you guys see that little correction um, by, oh, did it scroll? Hepcat J. Actually, Chaz said it was the handshake behind the back last Thursday. The, 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 the original name. Okay. I, I have a, I have an issue with that though, Hepcat, because there was a dance called the Apache, right? Apache. Apache. Not Apache. Apache. Um, which, which one of the main moves was... It's a very aggressive, violent dance. If you look it up on YouTube, you'll find some insane stuff where they're dancers, but they're full fighting. Like, it's a man and a woman, and they're just... Uh, maybe I'll find some real quick. Um, and that was called Apache, and I think that was related to Apache. Basically, we need to get Peter Loggins on the show. Okay. And clarify Listen. that. We're going to keep the same winner. Yeah, right? sure. Um, Don't worry, Brooks. We won't take your video away no. from you. No, Brooks, you still got it. But I do remember that there was that transition. There's a move where they, he's holding the girl's arm behind her back, and they're dancing, and then he just throws her out of a window. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Um, oh, that one. I'm yeah, suddenly I'm really uncomfortable. Any dance that, that involves defenestration yes. <laughs> is not, for, that, not okay. Oh my god, I t I blocked that video out of my brain and it's just flooding in right now. Yeah, right? actually um <gasps> let me see. Do we have time? I might I might Yeah, I might we're okay. To, might be able we to We finished early, so So Oh god. This I think this comes in at a certain point. This is literally yeah. on YouTube, but if you watch a little bit of this video, I've had the sound a little down. This is a patch dance or Apache. Hey, um look, look boys, look, look, a picture from a don't get a don't get a real guess. There's a little exposition here, but we'll watch a little bit of it. Maybe I can jump into it a little bit. No, here we go. Oh, he's pissed. Oh, they're trained dancers, though. Remember, this is this is for our drill. Oops. Well, it'll come back. Come back. There we go. <laughs> This is great. 
Oh, whoa. She done him wrong. No, aren't men beasts? Don't be silly in love again. No, you did it. Oh, he just kicked her. Yeah. Can I mention how much I'm so not okay with this? But, but, but. <laughs> I keep. Why do I keep losing? Okay. Oh. Wow. Because invariably, like. When there's conflict in a dance, it's a, it's about controlling the woman. Yeah, but you you'll see how it plays out. Like really? <laughs> wow. Have you not seen this at the harangue? Didn't no. I think um, Leonard showed some of this. I wasn't there this year. Well, I, I, it was the year you were there. I think maybe. Maybe not the week I was there. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> okay, that was cool. <laughs> the <laughs> unsocial dance. That's what that guy Jay says. <laughs> now, what does this move look like? Wait, wait. Here we go. Remember that? The hell's a popping. Ugh. Okay, I'm really not okay with this. Oh. Wait, he's almost done. Oh. Wow. Okay, that's. Great. That's an insane that uh, flip mm -hmm. there. That is not Ooh. nice. Ooh. Oh. Oh. Huh. Mrs. Deeds goes to town. <laughs> the last of Mr. Cheney. <laughs> And that's it. That's it. What so the heck was that? Normally when you're on stage and someone does a hair pull, it's this thing where like um, another person goes to grab the hair and the person whose hair it is hangs on right. as if they're like trying right. to detain right. detach the person's hand, but like they're in control of the movement. That was just like, she was straight up just holding him by his hair. Well, he was flipping too. And there was no doubt that was more violence than you'll probably see in a WWF wrestling bout because they weren't falling on a sprung yeah. floor or anything and they were but Kids, I don't seriously don't, don't try do this, this at home, home. I don't know For what real. the history of that is it's called the crazy gang Apache dance that there was a lot of that that went on and they were it was I think it was French and they were very uh, very acrobatic and very aggressive and very you know it's just it's just something that happened I mean be okay with it or not but that's the thing that is, came from somewhere um What's that thing do where it. you? <laughs> what's that? The thing where you? The other capoeira? thing? Yeah, the, like, capoeira. Yeah, capoeira is like aggressive and interactive, but it's not like abusive. That's like abusive. <laughs> what? I'm just reading James and Marissa. This is like a normal Saturday night for us. <laughs> <laughs> That's so wrong. <laughs> so wrong. I'm sorry. <laughs> Do you need to talk? Not okay. You had a point, though. Not okay, James <laughs> and Marissa. You had a point, yeah. Zucker Punch. You can finish your point. No, no, no. My point was made. Like, okay. Capoeira is an art. It's beautiful and has aggressive element. It, it's definitely aggressive and acrobatic. But that was just like downright abusive. Yeah. yeah. And I hate seeing models for that on television at any point. Like, you know, we were just talking about Twilight. I hate that there are like abusive relationships that people look up to on TV and on movies that people idolize. It's like having cigarettes everywhere in films. Right. Like, yeah, artistic, like, you know, you do whatever you want, but the fact that these are the paradigms that we show to people as a model for like how they want to build their future relationships is effed up. Yep. Yep. Next week at the <laughs> 920 special, we have a beginner class in Apache dance. Um, Nicole and I will be teaching it. I'll be wearing the dress though. <laughs> oh Make sure only long, only people with long hair are invited. Only people with long hair and, and there's not much to grab on. She had to, serious like. Just, where are you gonna hold on to your hair? She was, like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> there's, your, there's your bonus, people. There's your bonus bit of video. <laughs> how did we get there? <laughs> I feel like we've spent the entire hour saying, how did we get here? <laughs> this is like the third or fourth time we've done this. Mm. Oh, that's how prepared we are for the show. Um, all right. Well, thanks for playing along, ladies and gentlemen. Again. <laughs> thanks for bearing with us, I guess. <laughs> um, 
uh, <laughs> I guess this is our thank you part, right? If you, yeah, if you uh, want to get in touch with us and tell us how awesome you think it is when I go off on running tirades <laughs> against videos that we're viewing, you can let us know in a multitude of areas. You can uh, <laughs> contact us on Facebook with Yehudi. Um, or on the Twitters at Yehudi, at Spuds, at Zagrapunch, at Rickomatic, or the traditional method of telephoning a person. Yep. 201 show. That's 201-984-7469. Or you can just grab us by the hair if you see us in person. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Don't, I, like I, don't, I, I don't think you want to mess with Nicole, really. You can <laughs> yeah. boss Rick around all day, but Nicole will fight back. Okay, I, I would you recommend, hair, I recommend I would don't cut, start yeah, with Nicole you. Yeah, to go with, go for spuds first. That, uh, uh, what was it that Frank called you? The uh, Filipino Tintin. Tin tin. That was the best. I love it. <laughs> I got to make my cat look like Snowy now. I don't know. I got to <laughs> spray paint him. Shh. I, I, now, yeah. every time I look at you, I'm going to think Filipino Tintin. Thank you. <laughs> Um, while we're doing the thanks, thanks to Casey McGill for the awesome theme music. Yes. We all have it stuck in our heads still, even though we hear it every time we play yes. it. Yes. And I, I seriously want to hear it like on the dance floor. <laughs> it's so good. Yes, we definitely need the extended version. CaseyMcGill.com. Boom. For real. Thank you to Cafe Sophie for hosting us yet again. Yeah. Cafe Sophie, where they serve fine Verve coffee beverages and Silk Road teas and pastries, just like we enjoy today. Thanks for <laughs> cutting into my shot. <laughs> That's 3463 16th Street in San Francisco. Cafe Sophie SF. Dot com. And everyone stick around after the credits for the Frankie Moment of Zen. You're really not going to want to miss it. Oh, do we have one of those? We sure do. <laughs> <laughs> stick around while Spud's trying to find it. Stick around for a couple it. of minutes while is, we figure it out. Is it before or after? Uh, it's before. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Oh, okay. Before the credits? Now? Mm-hmm. What else do we have for the show? <laughs> Here, hold on. Hold on. Let me oh, that it. one. Yeah. Oh, the one where Frankie, Frankie yes. and Chaz is whatever? Yes, that, that one. one. Yeah. <laughs> well, hey, th- so mm-hmm. this is Rickomatic. This is a punch. Are you good? Yeah. This is a punch. <laughs> this is Spuds, and uh, thanks for joining us. <laughs> <laughs> now oh. your moment of zen. <laughs> Who's that this face? could go on forever, but these are the things that happened. Chaz and I was with three and four. You was with me with three acts, weren't you? How many acts? Uh, three acts. Yeah, this is this wonderful young man. This is my darling Chance. He's the, the apple of my eye. I love him dearly. He's your well, son. I don't care what you say, Frankie Manning. He's your son, but he's my immaculate conception. <laughs> so in preparing for this earlier today, I, 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 I've tried to pry dirt out of all of these people, and, and they're just not dishing. Yeah, they don't dish. Yeah. But I asked Norma, I said... What about Chaz? You know, don't you have like a really memorable moment or you did something really bad? And she's, she says, oh no, he's an angel. They all hated him. He was so nice. He was always perfect. Look at him, he's angelic. But now's my moment to ask his dad. Was he angelic, Frankie? Was he always good, Chaz? An angel? <laughs> That's a turkey over there, bro. I'm a penguin, not a turkey. <laughs> well, I, I just want to tell you that Chaz is my son, but he's also my best friend. So, uh... <laughs>
put some jelly on that rose swing nation. People grooving together.